A lot, a lot of people outside Nicaragua, especially in the United States and Western Europe, are concerned about the situation in the country, but have a completely false idea about what the reality is. And do, 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 do either of you or both of you have a take on that and, and feelings about it that you, know, you, you, could help, that you think might help people get a better idea of what's going on? Right. Well, I mean, just from uh, looking at a lot of information on Twitter, it seems like there is still a strong group of people that know that most of the information that they're given by, by the mainstream media is going to be false. Oh, so okay. there's so many people who don't uh, believe, you know, what's been told about Syria or, you know, Ukraine, Ukraine, Libya, oh, yeah, Ukraine, yeah. Libya, exactly. So those situations and who know that Brazil was a coup. Um, so I think there are some, there's some hope, but you know, I'm... I think a lot of people that don't like Trump uh, are more likely now to be maybe open to uh, critical perspectives on, on the culture and critical perspectives on the U.S. policy. Right. Humanitarian intervention is since ex-Yugoslavia has been kind of the new way of getting rid of God. Outside of they Afghanistan don't. and Iraq, it's humanitarian intervention. It's the good guys coming to rescue the, the, the uh, grieved people from the bad guys. And in Nicaragua, that's the way the narrative has been played out. Uh, I understood that NED and maybe Mata Diaga's money funded maybe 3,000 social media sites. And they all had a narrative that they were prepared. They were going to do, they were going to, they were waiting for the excuse. It started with the forest fire in Indio Maiz, right. which was in early April. Right, which is incredible. Given and the that, fires we've had in the United States recently, they have raged. And then the rain came and we really put it out. Right. Even though the Sandinistas were working hard to put it out. And then on April 16th was the next excuse. That was the end. Ortega announcing the inch changes, changes in the social security system. So somehow or other, there was a, a readiness with the social media sites, right. with, the para, with the paramilitaries, to launch a blitzkrieg, right. information blitzkrieg, exactly what it was. and a terrorist blitzkrieg. Uh, in the first four days in April, uh, April 20th to 24th, there were 60 people killed. And I'd like to know more about how that planning was, was, was launched on April 19th and 20th before the trial shows that Mata Diaga met with Viper on April 22nd at Upoli, giving him a lot of money to set up six gangs, all of which were going to be terrorized in different neighborhoods. So, who was I, my theory is the U.S. Embassy was the coordinating all this. That's my theory. NGOs, the church, COSEP. Uh, a lot of planning MRS, went into it. A MRS. lot of planning had gone into it for a long time. And it, it was, it was, but who were the paramilitaries? You know, the, the narratives that went out was the, the people who were shooting when they were the police were shooting them. Right, right. That's exactly and what that's I exactly thought, too. And that's exactly the opposite. Right. That's what I thought, too, is that people are seeing someone go by in trucks shooting, but they're not trucks. police. Right, but they're not eyes. police. No, they're not police. And every accountant in the news here just described mass civilians. So there was really never any evidence that they were police. They're always saying mass civilians, and then later in the story they'll say attacked by police or attacked by anti Martinez. So even within every single article, the ones I've read, which have been quite a number of them, from uh, El Nuevo Dario, have twisted the story as they go along. It always begins with mass civilians, but by the end of the story, it's police or paramilitary. We have to also make it clear to people who are the funding sources of all of these news sources. The NGOs are primarily funded by the U.S. and the U.K. Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, mostly grant money from those two countries. Uh, the three human rights groups that are cited by Enrique, Enrique Hart Hendricks yes. all have money from NED, National Endowment for Democracy. So there is a, uh, an expectation to present a particular perspective right. based on the source of the money. Um, and so 
everything that those three human rights groups that Amiki studies. You printed his whole report. Oh, incredible. I printed another one, but not um, as extensive as that. And uh, you, can, you can see a lot of the patterns, the dates, and where the head injuries were, which, which in the case were more likely snipers. Right, exactly. Um, and I don't think they were mostly, I don't think they were saying they used to snipers. No. Uh, I mean, after all, the opposition had incredible resources to do whatever they wanted to those first two months because they controlled the narrative. Right, and in the early days, the government did not control the narrative. So they not at know, all. They didn't know where is going to be the hot spot. They didn't know people are going to be here or something's going to, uh, there's going to be some explosion here or some outbreak here. So they couldn't possibly have put the snipers in the places where they were going to. Well, I, I think Steve and I were talking a lunch about there, did, there doesn't seem to have been any intelligence on the part of the Sandinistas warning them about what was going to happen. Right, I thought about that. 20, I was 21st, 22nd. Now, when you read the trials of the Marito murders and the Viper trial, there's a lot of informants and infiltrators that are testifying. So I think the Sandinistas put in motion really fast a People network to get into of place. intelligence. And I think. It made the Sandinistas stronger because I think they realized they were they were really under siege, the Serious right, under siege. seriously under siege. But the opposition also was on the lookout for anyone who maybe was an infiltrator because the, one of their early killed. kids they tortured to death, Kevin Duarte. They realized he had been with Sandinista Hutu and he was tortured so badly. His mother recognized him from a defect in his toe, so you know that the body was you know in very bad shape, and she was said to be very sad. When Ortega stated at July 19th at the celebration in August, he used the term satanic, satanic forces. Right. And you have to believe in some way, it was, kind of, it was, kind of, it was so sadistic. Right. It was kind of like a satanic uh, hatred for the Sandinistas. You, know, you, you could do whatever you wanted to. You could burn them, right. torture them. And the kill. mainstream and media. The church could the church was totally involved right. in it. was involved. And the mainstream media doesn't understand what really happened. They so they're here. always twisting the everything mainstream. Rosario and Daniel say. They twist into kind of, you know, this absence of empathy for the victims. And it's not an absence of empathy for the victims. It's an understanding of what actually took place. So, you know, it's incredible. I mean, like the uh, girl who did the woman, excuse me, who did the video for uh, the intercept put on about the students and then claimed you know, Rosario, refer Rosario referred to them as vampires. When she wasn't really talking about the students, I think um, what she's referring to is she was referring to MRS because they knew immediately who was behind it. Well, there's a, that's another story. I think Nils McCoon, he, he has a fairly good handle on what happened to the end. Why? What happened within the Sandinista party after 1990? Yes, he's written a lot about that. And which is he's written about, about how, because most of the MRS people had positions in ministries during the 80s in the Sandinista government. And when they were no longer in government, the minority party, they didn't really want to do the organizing and the work. Right, and they exactly. could fall back on their bourgeois contacts, all of which speak English, in the United States. To me, I don't, I like to stay away from talking about Danielle because it's really not the issue. The issue is U.S. trying to intervention intervention to change a government, a exactly. democratically elected sovereign government. That's the issue. Whether you like Ortega or not is Bye. not the issue, and that's what Mary Oster. She, she, she just so focuses on... Right, but that's with all of them, who seem just so, so um, virulently um, averse to, to Daniel Ortega. I mean, it's like a club almost. It's the We Hate Daniel Ortega right. club. And so and that's, therefore, it's like a drum they're always beating. That's so therefore, all they do. the U.S. Can, can intervene and change everything. And then, you know, for me, you have to ask, too, if they're real NGO people, how can their hatred for him be so intense when you know that he's cut poverty in half? 
or he's done. You know much more about the most regressive government in Central America. The, the land titles and the micro Equity with women, gender equity, right. uh, the roads, elect uh, electricity, you know, very few brownouts, very few. Uh, and for everyone, like to reach, the, to take the electricity to these far outposts right. of rural and areas, roads, no. where there's not a great population, that's not going to help your political base. There's hardly anyone lives out there, but they've done it because they want to not have, leave anyone out. And right? here we have neighboring uh, Honduras, who has a president who refused to step down after he was defeated at, at the election last year. And, you know, he, he simply continued, and the army supported him. And, oh, right, yeah. And, and, yeah. and so, is there Again. any issue about that? No, there's no issue about because he's, he's business friendly with the U.S. Yeah. They're friends with the U.S., and so is the new president of Costa Rica, who's supposedly in center right. left. Right. They've been planning stories, anti Ortega stories, in the paper in Costa Rica for years. So, oh, yeah, well, often, if you talk to people in Costa Rica who don't really know, um, they'll be like, oh, your government there. And it's like, are you kidding? The government's great. I mean, you know, coming from the United States to see, like, the police interacting with the community, you think, well, this is what police should be doing. You know, getting along with everyone, not uh, throwing their weight around, um, you know, just not misbehaving, not acting as though they're, you know, I'm the one with the gun. I mean, they're just, you know, but like 50% of them are women, when, right? When, yeah. You see so many women. I mean, to think like they suddenly, but let's go back to the bite, to the sniper issue one yeah. more time, is that... I would love for someone who's interviewing the kids, the students, the ones they put forward to the press, to ask them, do you know anyone who's been killed? Because those kids don't know a single person who's been killed. Not their cousin, not their sister, not their brother, not even any of their friends. I would be very shocked if any of the faces they put forward to the press even know anyone who's been killed. Because they intentionally targeted Poor kids, you know, from humble origins, for the most part. Paying them thirty dollars, they don't have to be at the home. Okay. Right, and we're paying them to get out there, or we're getting them out there through the all the messaging and the fake messaging. We're under attack. Come help us. We need your help. That called kids out into the street, and then they just went by and killed them here and there and everywhere. So when you look at it more closely, you find out they're saying Opoli was under attack, but Opoli wasn't. Those deaths didn't but take place at Opoli. Well, they they also took place staged, here, they over there, attacks. someplace they else. Staged the right, and then that's and the other film. Right. They look like they did that. And they did that also. I mean, they have a whole bag of tricks, basically. Yes. And then I think when the media comes down here, they're given the opposition tour. And in one story after another, they don't talk to Sandinistas, they don't try to find out. Then maybe we'll mention, oh, the government says this. And the tone is like very derogatory, as if like, oh, the government is claiming this, and what they claim couldn't possibly be true. So, you know, it's never like a, a balanced story. No, well, they, there's been no Western media here, except for uh, Max. Max and Blumenthal. Dan they came and they were just here for a few right? days. So there's been so little information that's been presented to the public about a counter narrative or a counter to the narrative that was bombarded everywhere for two months. And it's very hard to counteract uh, the speed of the internet once, once that phony narrative went out on hundreds if not thousands of sites. It's very hard to catch up with that. But then I wonder too about the di diaspora because there's many Nicaraguans, you know, not all right-wingers. I mean, the right-wingers are in Miami with the Cubans, but then there's many who also live in California and New York and Texas. So, you know, I'm hoping that they eventually are going to help spread the word because I know they all come back to visit. They're going to see that, you know, it's completely fine here and it's safe. Um, you know, there's no problems. Everyone goes out at night. Everyone's well, having fun. Well, it didn't fun. go out at night in April, May, and June. No, but now, yeah, now, I mean, now you know, it's very normal. People, right. People walking downtown and sitting in the park. So. Right. Exactly. So you know, but what they're claiming now is all this repression. It's a totalitarian state. I mean, you know, it's. And well, Amnesty International, in their report, I believe, in April or May, used the word massacre. Right. That Ortega was massacring students. And, and you know, the economists, the, the bloodbath. The two students that, there's two students that really need to be interviewed more. One is in still yeah. recovering in the hospital. He was the president. Yeah. No, Nan Morales, yeah. he's out now, but yeah, he's okay. still in recovery. It's a long and he was, he was, a, he was a, 
in among the students who were who were protesting the government. Right. But then he saw that the thugs were being hired and that right. they were being preempted I by, into his by a criminal. Situation. So he he woke out and then they tried to kill him. And then there's an anonymous student from Henatepe from Hunan. Right. I don't think he's been identified yet. I read he, that one also. He describes how they were infiltrated right early on and that most of the students didn't want anything to do with it. Right. And they were constantly required, to, you know, say you're under attack by the police right. 30 times a day. We're under attack by the police. And and I think the police uh, were in their barracks and to, at, at Ortega's command that he ceded to the request of the dialogue. He agreed to the dialogue early on. The police would be taken off the street because they were saying the police were right. leaving all these killings. So the police were in the barracks. Now, I don't know about around Upoli. Enrique Hendricks has a map with Upoli in a circle with, around it. Within all the neighborhoods. All the neighborhoods where all the killings were oh, they happening. did some. They killed so many. Uh, and that was all in April and May. Well, actually, no, it was after May 10th. Right. I looked into the cases between May 8th to, like, May 12th, okay. which was about five or six deaths. That kind of culminated for me on the 17th when they commandeered a bus and ro ran over a poor kid. And, you know, then the bus ends up outside of Upoli, and, you know, still no one's, you know, asking the right questions. Right, right. I think that this whole thing had made the San Luis much sharper. Oh, yes, I think so, too. Because they, I think they were caught by surprise. And I, I don't know, I don't know what kind of intelligence they had. Right. Because it doesn't seem like they knew. I what think they were caught them. completely off guard. You can see Ortega after, you know, the, maybe the second weekend or whatever, just kind of like, you know, reeling almost with the, the, the level of destruction they pulled off. But what kills me is that now the claim is all about repression, 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 repression. And for the mainstream media, they never acknowledge the crimes of the opposition. Of course it the looks crime. like repression, but these are criminals who have, you know, and there's so well, much evidence, but well, you've really gotten into the It's evidence. a terror, it's a terror, it's really an incredible campaign of terror. But they never covered that story, so now their right. their their mantra is repre the repression, the repression, the repression. Well, really, the terror campaign was very um, extraordinary. It was extraordinary. I mean, it's very, it, it, it was an intense campaign of murder, intimidation, arson, torture, uh, extortion, extortion. Uh, I mean, it was incredible. And, and, it, and we have a case study right here. This is humanitarian intervention using a campaign of well-orchestrated terror, probably organized by the U.S. Embassy in Iowa, using MRS. Certainly financed by the United States. Well, and I think the CIA station, remember, every embassy has a CIA station. Right. And here they have, I think, 10 officers working in the embassy. It's brand new. Have you seen the embassy? It's I remember brand that. new. No, I haven't. I haven't seen anything about that, but I remember that memo that someone put out, that they planned to destabilize the country in 2016. So they certainly had the plan. Well, they started. Uh, Mata Diaga and, and the drug network had it written in a 2011 document that they sent that started the drug trafficking in Manaiwa nightclubs with... This is interesting. ...with um, Jesus Cesar Paz Varela. Varela. There's a lie, I don't know. But I mean, so the, but the, he has this deep criminal background, and now they're trying to, it's almost like they're now trying to rehabilitate him to put him forward again as kind of representing the opposition. The new um, president, the maybe new when president. they did the BBC with Juan Chamorro, they realized, well, he cracks too easily under pressure, and he's, he's not good at you know, responding. Whereas, no, whereas Maradiaga is a consummate liar. Well, he's, if a you saw the last, he's a professional right, con man. Right, if you saw the last BBC... He's kind of like uh, Trump. He just lies through his teeth, I mean, about... Uh, and he's been set up from long ago. Right, you know. right, he was groomed. And he talks about how he walked across the border of the U.S. when he was a boy during the culture war. So he's probably never really immigrant, but he, he probably talks about how he walked across the border as a boy and then became this golden boy, right. you know. Right. You see, they were distributing what they call pink cocaine, which is not really cocaine, but it looks like cocaine that's pink. But it gives you an incredible high. And 
it was being distributed. They named the nightclubs. Right. So it was detailed. Yeah, and it was brought in on the shoe, uh, heels of shoes. And um, this was going to finance the company the revolution against the, basically the insurrection. And they were planning it. And what year was that in? To, well, the, the agreement was signed in 2011, according to the oh, documents. So they've been planning it for quite a while. Somehow the Blitzkrieg was ready when they had an excuse. The Blitzkrieg of social media and the, the, the attacks on the six San Jose cities on April 20th. Leon, the fires, the Ariamba. Attacking symbols of the government. Everything yeah. that Viper explains in that confession exactly. it actually happened. Exactly. And that's why you have to give it some credibility. And then the more and the Marito Marito? Maritos. Marito trial. I've seen that little bit of it. A lot of information about right. the about it's coming the, out. The anti canal people. Exactly. And I'm against that's the canal saying. myself and that's for the same reason. But but we know that the but, the real members of the opposition, the Alianza Civica, their real work is not with women, it's not with the land, it's not with the peasants, it's the anti Ortega plan. Right, right. it's the their real work the is right. Yeah, exactly. the real work is to set up this false organization that claims to represent people when it really represents hardly anyone and to advance this anti Well, it, represent, it represents the 1%. Right, to advance the anti We want to privatize the economy again, eliminate the people from health care and education and gender equity and so forth, and have it all to themselves, which is the way they think. You know, the Sandinista government is the most progressive government in Latin America. Yeah. And that's why they're being targeted. That's why Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and probably Bolivia. You know, Goebbels, the, the Hitler's Propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, he was famous for his line saying, if you tell enough lies, often enough, right. it becomes the truth. Right. And that seems and to that seemed to be the narrative here, was with all the social media and even the Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International using basically the same information that was going into the social media, they were telling the lies, the narratives. And Right. I think that's why we need to, to tell people, you know, this lie of the repression, that there's so much repression, is like, no, the real criminal activity took place here, and the government's doing a very good job in, like, documenting the evidence. Yeah, and talking instance, about political prison. Well, these are all people who were charged with arson, murder, robbery, uh, art, uh, burning people alive, destroying 55 ambulances. Right. I mean, and they videotaped so many of their crimes, so it's because they thought to. they didn't think they were ever going to get caught. They knew in April. There's, I mean, there's they had, had, they were going to have Ortega out in five days. I, I mean, this is my my theory. Is they were so cocky, they had so well planned. They had the U.S. embassy behind them, the U.S. money behind them, the CIA behind them. They didn't need to worry about concealing what they were filming on their cell phones. But these cell phones have been confiscated in the arrests, and it's part of the evidence in the trials. It's pretty incredible. Uh, even in the Marito trial. In, uh, right, I started to follow that incredible. too. So I was talking about wow, that. So. Like, right. so they linked them to the anti-canal people. Yeah. They documented aspects of the coup. And how they planned to come from Miami. Right, and how they planned to come in by that march to attack the police station. Right, right. They've got them on the Marito thing, so, right. Yeah, I mean, the and crimes are, the crimes are... are uh, there's dozens of witnesses in the Marito case as well, because there were a lot of people there. There were a lot of, a right. lot of people witnessed what and, happened. And you know Meridiaga is very close to Medardo Maria. No, I didn't. Both know, but yeah. I'm not surprised. He, Meridiaga, who they're trying again, seems to re, they seem to be rehabilitating him to put him again forward as the face of the opposition. He's very close to the man who is being charged as one of those who carried out this. Well, Meridiaga is a fugitive because uh, I saw I just find saw the arrest warrant again the other day that Ortega put out for Meridiaga. Right. He's a fugitive. I'm government. sending him. And we should say he's a fugitive. Right. That's he the is word a fugitive. We should right. Right. Uh, here's this guy with all his credentials. He's a fugitive from justice, from, from committing right. but acts he of has, terror. He has defended Medardo, um, you know, on Twitter. He's so he's, who? Uh, Medardo, one of the people charged with the burrito. Oh, okay. And his picture in the background of Twitter is a picture of uh, 
of Majardo. Right. And so now the evidence against Majardo is, is so clear, um, communicating but with the anti they, they, they weren't worried. They, 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 and also, they're probably on pink cocaine, cocaine, which is what been funding them. So pink cocaine, but it makes you feel invincible. That's true, they say that. It makes you feel invincible. Okay. And this pink cocaine isn't cocaine, but it makes you feel really on top of the world. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of those participants were using drugs. They, they, knew, they, they knew they could get away with murder. Certainly the younger ones were. Oh, and they, and they found a lot of the drugs in Upoli, not just marijuana, but they found the, the real cocaine, they found pink cocaine, they found PV3, they call right. it. Uh, and that's part of the plan, that was part of the opposition plan, was to open up Nicaragua to the narco traffickers. Exactly. They, they have done such a good job in keeping the drug organized crime right. and the drugs out. Of course, there are some drugs, but not very many, nothing like Costa Rica. Or Honduras. But I started writing last year when I came to Nicaragua. I started, I was going to write a book about, I was going to interview a lot of ex Sandinista soldiers who were injured. Uh, amputees. There's a lot of amputees yeah. here. Is that from the war? Yeah. Well, a lot of them are from the war. So I was going about the title of my thesis was Reagan's Vicious War 35 Years Later. So now I think, well, it's the coup. That's the book. Right, I thought that in the early days too. This is the Contras are back. I mean, these kind of crimes that they did, the torturing, and also the whitewashing by the mainstream media, right. as if that's not happening. And the real enemy is Daniel Ortega. I mean, the characters haven't even changed police. in some the cases. And the right. 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 I was reading Edgar Simona's pamphlet. He was the propaganda minister for the Contras until 1984, the FDN. He wrote a book called Packaging the, Con the Contras. He left, he left the FDN in disgust. But I've been reading it again, and it's kind of like the same behavior that he's describing that left him, led him to leave the FDN. Uh, it's kind of what, it's kind of like almost a template right. for what was happening here. Um, and it was a war. And I think Daniel was smart at not, not getting military out. I thought maybe he should have gotten military involved. Uh, I think he's smart. Right, they knew what they, they were doing. Smart. When you think of how well they handled it, actually, it's incredible. And they took the police off the streets for 10 weeks, which was, I don't know if that was a wise thing to do, but all the shootings that were happening I think it did were, make the population realize. Can I realize. say something yes. in yes, Spanish? Sure. Go ahead. Well, because, um, well. Yes, in Spanish. <laughs> and then no, because, si, si, we say that lo, the opportunity, La, 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 si el gobierno y Daniel hubiese uh, dejado a la policía y reprimir los, los, uh, los tranques, si la policía hubiese estado afuera, nosotros hubiéramos tenido una guerra civil. I think so. That's why, uh, por eso el, el comandante no... That's why he didn't put the military on the street, because he felt it, felt it could break out into civil war. See. And bring in the U.S. military, because, yeah. But then I understood later that they really knew what they were doing by keeping the military. And I think when they withdrew the police, that's when a lot of people realized who's really causing the violence. Right, now Because everyone knew. And then, you know, we felt a great insecurity. Because in, in Esteli, it was the, it was a local, local Frente Militantes that organized, and, and they were carrying arms. But they, it was them that stopped the tranquistas from the taking over. Yeah. So the neighbors had to basically... That's yeah. when some voluntary police yeah. came out. And voluntary police, or whatever you want to call them, right. but it was, it was local people took up arms, and they stopped the tranquistas from taking over the center right. of town. Right. And the way the main, what it kills me is the way the mainstream media was a uh, parapolice, yeah, paramilitary, paramilitary. they just repeat it over and over again and they don't realize because they have no idea what actually happened here. It's that Sandinistas were having their houses burned, mm. their people kidnapped. Well, I mean, they were targeted. Right, they were targeted and, um, and how, uh, just how violent the opposition was. And,